Now that you understand how to construct a galvanic cell, redox reactions aren't that much different. Here are my steps for writing net redox reactions. Let me go through them for you. Here's our question. Write the net equation for the reaction, if there is one, when hydrogen gas is bubbled into a nickel-2 iodide solution. What that means in chemistry speak is we have hydrogen gas that's dissolved in the water and nickel-2 iodide, which of course dissolves. So we have essentially hydrogen, nickel-2+, plus, and iodide-1- minus floating about in solution. And our question is, what is the reaction, if any? Our first job is to find the reduction potentials associated with the reactants. That's table 11.1 .1 in your Wirtz textbook. So as I showed you before, you can go to your ebook and select resources, followed by standard reduction potentials. So we are looking for nickel 2 plus. I see the nickel 2 plus right here. It's at minus 0.23. We also want hydrogen. This is right here at zero volts. It's part of our standard hydrogen electrode. We need to go down on the table to find our iodide. Here it is at plus 0.54 volts. So I've written our reduction reactions on the slide, but of course our first job is to list them with more negative on top and more positive on the bottom. So let me get them in order. That's better. Now I need to use my imagination. I need to imagine that the orbitals on the left are empty. There are oxidizing agents. So these have empty acceptor orbitals. And I need to imagine that the orbitals on the right have electrons. Each of these is a two electron reduction. So I've put two electrons in our filled donor orbitals. Step three, we need to circle the species that are actually present. What often happens to students at this stage is they say, aha, nickel's my best reducing agent and I too is my best oxidizing agent. Voila, reaction. Do we have nickel? Hmm, we have nickel two plus. And we don't have I two, we have I one minus. So we need to circle what we actually have. We have nickel 2 plus, we have H2 gas, and we have iodide. Now we need to select the pair in which the electrons travel from high energy orbitals to low energy vacant orbitals. And if you can't spot any such situation, there is no spontaneous redox reaction. So we're going to ignore the species that we don't have and just focus on what we have to see if there is a spontaneous redox reaction. Will there be electron transfer between iodide 1 minus and N2 plus? Well, not spontaneous. Electrons don't want to jump up to higher energy orbitals that are farther away from the nucleus. And hydrogen's electrons also do not want to jump further away from the nucleus. So neither of these electron transfers is spontaneous. Both are uphill transfers. So guess what? There is no appreciable reaction between these three substances. It seemed like there should have been. There's a lot going on there. But the truth is, nothing happens. All right, let's change it up. Why don't we bubble the hydrogen gas into a copper 2 iodide solution? So here is our scenario. And according to the solubility rules, copper plus 2 iodide is soluble. It's the copper 1 that is not soluble. But we have three species floating around in solution. Do they react? So once again, we need to find the materials on a reduction potential table. Here they are, and I've already listed them with more negative on top, which turns out to be our standard hydrogen electrode, and most positive on the bottom. Step two is our imagination. Empty on the left, electrons on the right. 
Step three is circle what you actually have. These are the three species we're asking about regarding a reaction. Hydrogen, copper 2 plus, and iodide. Let's focus on just these three. Do the electrons from iodide want to jump uphill and further away from the nucleus to copper 2 plus? No, that would be a non-spontaneous reaction. It's uphill. Do the electrons belonging to hydrogen want to fall downhill and get closer to the nucleus by transferring to copper 2 plus? Why yes, don't mind if we do. So I'm going to delete my iodide from the equation. We are writing net redox reactions. So we are only writing the things that react or participate in the reaction. So if there is a spontaneous redox reaction, the top redox half reaction must be reversed. This is our anode, and oxidation occurs at the anode. So I will leave my bottom reaction as a reduction. I'll write it the exact same direction, copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons going to copper. But my reaction involving hydrogen, I will flip it. That means my product will become reactant, and my reactants I will write on the product side. Now I add the reaction in such a way that the electrons will cancel. This is pretty easy because we have two electrons going in and two electrons coming out. So this is our net redox reaction. The copper 2 plus in solution reacts with the hydrogen gas to make solid copper and two H1 plus ions.